<clears throat> All right, hello, welcome, electrochemistry part five. So in this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna relate the concept of free energy to our electrochemistry. So free energy, the amount of energy that's usable in a reaction, of course, we need to know that, and that is gonna be related to this amount of energy that's involved in the transfer of electrons and therefore uh, electrical current and all of these things. But here's, the, here's kind of these parts of this equation you probably don't know. Uh, N is always number of moles and it actually is number of moles here as well. So number of moles, but in this case, it's number of moles of the electrons. So you actually have to know how many electrons are oxidized and reduced. So we could say how many electrons are transferred and taken up. F right here is Faraday's constant. And Faraday's constant is the thing that relates these two number of moles of electrons. And this is the, um, the voltage at standard, at standard uh, temperature and, uh, and condition, so standard condition. So Faraday's constant is 96,000, uh, what is it, 96,485 uh, coulombs. So a coulomb is a measure of electrical charge, and you can tell that it's a very small number, therefore we have, this is, this is a lot right here. But this is how many coulombs of electrical charge you get per mole of electrons uh, per volts. So you have to know moles of electrons and you have to know voltage. So our voltage under standard condition is what this is right here. So here's our, here's our equation, here's our setup right here. And so uh, we have a half reaction or a voltaic or two half reactions set up in a voltaic cell. And remember the voltaic cell, we had two cells. In this case, we've got aluminum in one and we've got zinc in the other. And of course, they're going to transfer electrons between the two. So one of them is going to be oxidized and one of them is going to be reduced. And so we write out the two half reactions in reduction form because that's what our table is. And so you can just look at zinc and look at aluminum and um, here, here they are. So zinc two plus plus two electrons gives us a negative 0.62. And then the aluminum gives us a negative 1.66. Now we have to decide which one of these is gonna be oxidized, which one's gonna be reduced. So the way that I do it is I look for the one that's gonna be reduced because that's the one you leave the same. Um, so reduction is gonna occur in the one that's either positive or the one that's closest to a positive number. And so this one is closer to a positive number, and that's gonna cause this one to be reduced. So this one we leave the same, and then, then we assume that this one is actually gonna be oxidized. So if aluminum's gonna be oxidized, it actually switches around, and then the, the sign changes. So it's gonna be aluminum in the solid form is gonna turn into aluminum in the aqueous form, three plus plus uh, three electrons, right? And uh, that means that this is gonna become positive 1.66. So now we can actually figure out our E right here or our voltage, our electrical voltage at standard conditions because um, we know now which one's oxidized and which one's reduced after we write out the two half reactions. And so we add 1.66 to uh, zero, Point, or yeah, 0 0.762, and we come up with a total of um, plus uh, 90, 90 volts, so plus 0.9 volts, sorry, plus 0 0.90 volts. Um, and so um, now we have to continue on and solve uh, this problem over here, and uh, what are we going to do for that? Well, uh, first of all, we're going to have to figure out then if this and this combine, how many total electrons are transferred? Um, so what we see here is that uh, this is our new equation right here. Remember this one uh, we're not going to use because we found out that this was oxidized. So what we have here is we have this one giving off two electrons and then this one needing three. So to even this out, we're going to have to make uh, this six and this six. So to make this side six, we have to have three zinc, right, at two plus. We have to have three of those. Um, and then um, plus, uh, we're gonna have aluminum on this side, which is solid. And we're gonna have two of those. So we have to, this has to go by two, and this has to go by three. And we have to do that because we have to make the number of moles 
of electrons even because they can't just one can't just give two and the other one take three they have to do the same amount and so we do that with uh, balancing the equation essentially so two of the aluminums is going to go now to um, we're going to have the zinc here, and that's going to be three. So three zinc in the solid form. Plus on this side, we're going to have two aluminum in the aqueous form. So uh, take your two half reactions, and then you combine them. And when you're combining them, you have to even up the electrons. So now with this equation right here, uh, we basically have uh, six electrons going on this side, and then six electrons going on this side, which is that's what we need. So now we know our number of moles of electrons. So now we have uh, the number of moles of electrons. We can insert that in there. So here we go. So our uh, free energy uh, equals uh, negative uh, six moles of electrons. So negative six moles of electrons times, uh, we have Faraday's constant, 96,485. And that is per mole times volts. So we're good so far. And then that is going to be multiplied by our voltage at standard, which we already figured out was 0 0.90. So 0 0.90 volts. And uh, we go ahead and multiply that all out. And we'll find that our change in G is negative 5200000 joules. Um, and if we convert that to kilojoules, because G, remember, is always typically expressed in kilojoules, uh, we're going to have 520, negative 520 kilojoules. So a negative 520 kilojoules, remember a negative G is always spontaneous. So this reaction is going to go very spontaneously. It's going to proceed on its own. It's um, not going to be a problem. It's going to go. And it's uh, very, very much spontaneous because we have a very high uh, negative G. Um, now, we can actually do a little bit further application than that. We can actually find an equilibrium constant for this equation. And to do that, uh, remember the change in G equals the negative R times the temperature times the natural log of the equilibrium constant. And if you look at this, since for this particular situation we have our change in G, uh, we can actually solve this equation. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have negative uh, 520,000. Remember, since the R constant uses joules, we do want to keep this in joules when we run this equation. Equals negative 8.314. That's our R constant for this equation. This is the equation from the previous chapter. Um, times our temperature. Well, 25 degrees Celsius is going to be 298 Oh, I better write that correctly, 298 degrees Kelvin um, times the natural log of the K. So uh, multiply these together, divide by this, and take the inverse of the natural log, and you'll find that K, the equilibrium constant, um, in this case, well, if you, did, if you divided this by this, you would actually get um, 210. And so it's the um, natural log would equal the natural log of the K. Take the, uh, take the inverse of the natural log um, of 210, and you actually get, uh, so this would be 210 up here, you actually get uh, K to equal 1.6 times 10 to the 91st power. Okay, that... That's a big number, um, pretty sure that's right. So with an equilibrium constant that is so enormous and the positive right there, uh, well, what does that tell you? That tells you that this reaction is going to proceed spontaneously all the way to total completion. There's gonna be nothing left from the original. It's gonna go all the way, um, no problem. Um, so there's our, there's our, our equilibrium constant, we were able to find our voltage, we were able to find our half reactions, we were able to determine which one was oxidation, which one's reduction, we were able to find our free energy from it, and we were able to find an equilibrium constant expression um, that matches up to it.